Hey, thanks for checking out another video from Netpix today. And this video, I'm going to talk about a continuation trend trading strategy. Now, before I do, just make sure you click below or above. There's a free PDF download about options trading. Uh, just another way to approach the markets for those that are interested. It's totally free. Uh, you can grab it. Um, so let's talk about that, about continuation trend trading. So if you are a trader that trades reversals after a pullback or a rally in price, oftentimes there's a difficult time in determining if a reversal actually took place or is taking place. Now there are methods like uh, candlestick patterns or even simple trend line breaks that will show you the change in the rhythm of the market. But I wanna consider another method. So this strategy is all about letting the reversal take place and then you look for the continuation to reach a certain point and then enter the trade and ride it to two different levels. So who is this for? If you're a relaxed trader and you don't mind giving up some potential profits in order to get a confirmed trade, this is for you. Who's it not for? It's not for those traders who trade on the edge of their seats who are looking to pick the exact top and exact bottom of a market. So the only indicator you're gonna need on this is the Fibonacci retracement tool. And I'm actually gonna use three inputs, 0.786, 1.272, and 1.618. And for those who want uh, an objective way to determine the trend direction, you can use a 50 period EMA for trend. We also wanna be aware of the swing high and low points that can become support or resistance when price is approaching it. And as for time frames, I personally prefer daily chart setups for most of my trading. But if you want more action, feel free to experiment on any time frame that you choose because the concepts are gonna be the exact same for a daily chart, a weekly chart, a monthly chart, to a five minute chart. So the plan behind this strategy is to wait until price travels to the 0.786 level of the recent swing. So this is a little bit different than the traditional use of the FIB retracement tool. So the traditional use is in red. So you pull a FIB retracement from low at one to the high at two, and you look for price to retrace in the area marked three or any other level that you've drawn. That's a standard way. The other color, that's how we're gonna use it. We're gonna look for the retrace to begin. We're gonna actually pull our Fibonacci tool from A to the low at B. And then we're gonna look for three levels, 0 0.786, 1 1.272, and 1.618. So what are we gonna use these levels for? Well, it's 0 0.786, that's gonna give us our entry price. And if the low at B, if we're looking at an uptrend, starts to get lower, you just wanna make sure you redraw the Fibonacci lines. 1.272, that's gonna be our first profit target or trade management area. And 1.618 is our final target price. So as a trader, you're, you're gonna to have to determine if you're gonna trade in the direction of a trend or take advantage of each swing that presents itself. So if you decide to take all the trades, I want you to make sure that you watch out for markets that are not making swing highs and lows or lower highs and lows, because that's a trading range and those will chop you up. And that depends obviously on how tight this trading range may be. So if you enter at 0.786 and you are stopped out immediately, as long as price does not hit the 0.786 level in the opposite direction, then you can look to re-enter. And that will come into play, especially during ranges. So for this example, I'm actually gonna use a stock. And I'm gonna use a variation. We're just gonna take the obvious swings in the market, meaning I'm not gonna be concerned with the overall trend direction. So the basic selling rules, we're gonna look for a decline in price and then the rally to start. We're gonna measure from the low point to the high point of the rally. We're gonna look for price to break the 0.786 level. That's gonna be your entry. If price fails to break the swing low, we need to adjust our stop or our exit because we might be finding some support. We're gonna shoot for the 1.272 target, and that's conservative, but if we're seeing thrusting price action, we're gonna look at the 1.618. If we're buying, just the exact opposite. We want a rally, then a decline in the price. We're gonna measure from the high point of the decline to the low point. We're gonna enter at the 0.786 level. We're gonna monitor price at the swing high, and then we're gonna shoot for the 1.272 target. That's the conservative like we just talked about. So this is gonna be a daily chart of blink. 
the different colors are going to represent different trades. So on the left, the Fib tool pulls to measure the retracement from 1 to 2. The 0.786 entry price, you can see that with the green arrow. So we would enter the trade and place a stop loss below the low of the candle that triggered that 0.786 level. So we need price to clear highs. In this example, it doesn't. So we would immediately exit this trade. But price did travel roughly two bucks from entry. So most traders would have banked a small profit or just scratched the trade. So how you manage your trades, that can make a huge difference between any profits and a loss. On the second trade, it's the green numbers. We pull from one to two, which is the length of the price decline. The green arrow, that shows us our trade entry. And price eventually does hit the main target of 44.57. And that actually equaled $4.80 per share. Let's look at the third trade. The first trade, shown with the red numbers, the one to two, that's the pull. And the 786 is the entry price. Again, it's noted with the green arrow. Price stalls at the previous swing low. And again, depending on how you manage the trade, you would bank a small profit on this trade. On the fourth trade in green, we see the price hit the entry. And if your stop is above the entry candle, you would get stopped out. So now we're going to apply the re-entry rule. So if price does not break the 786 in the opposite direction, you would enter again at the same price. So this trade hits both targets for a profit of about $7.20 per share. And that, of course, that's going to depend on how you manage these trades. We need to stop. I mean, this strategy is going to assume that price is going to advance and it's going to continue to advance. So we want to make sure that our stop reflects that. So we have two things that we want to consider. We want to consider our original stop loss and adjusted stop at the highs or lows. Let's take a look at Bitcoin. And the green circles represents the FIB sequence. So the original stop is under the trigger candlestick that enters the trade. Now we want to adjust our stop under the candle that hits resistance in case of a long. Because the thinking is that the continuation, if it's strong, we should see very little hesitation at the swing high or swing low points. The key point is that the risk that you are using fits your trading account because there's absolutely no sense in risking 10% on a trade because it's not going to take many losing trades before you've dug yourself a pretty deep hole to get out of. Some other thoughts. At times, you're going to see a lot of swing points. The best thing you can do is just scrunch the chart up. That way, you see only the main swing points on the chart. Another point is you may decide to enter at the original entry price at the 786 level and then add to your position as price breaks the swing high or the swing low that needs to be taken out for price to advance. Another use of this strategy is to actually combine it with reversal off the extremes of the pullbacks. So you look for a retracement. You would trade a reversal off of the extreme of the pullback, however you want to do that. You would look to add to your position at the 786 level. You would manage your trade at the swing high or swing low point. And then you would look to use those price targets to scale out, to adjust your stop, or just take profits. I know traders love to use trading indicators. So can you add other ones? You can. But keep in mind that just because you add a whole bunch and make it more complex, it does not always equal success in trading. It's very important to know that. So give this one a try over several instruments and time frames. I want you to let me know what you think in the comments below. And don't forget to grab your, your free options guide. And at the same time, why don't you hit like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.